Greetings and welcome. This is Sugitech, and this is my guide how to stream to Twitch through OBS, which is also known as Open Broadcast Software. And this is the program that probably 90 to 95 percent of the streamers use. Um, some people use XSplit and a couple of other alternatives, but OBS is the best because it's 100 percent free. There's a lot of settings and a lot of customization and third-party apps for it. And it's relatively easy to understand and I will be explaining most of the things today for you guys. So the first things first, we go to the third tab, which is the profiles and profiles are pretty much a bunch of settings. And I have one for game recording and different streaming platforms because the settings differ between the streaming platforms and especially game recording is quite vastly different because I have very different settings on that. So we're gonna have a Twitch stream. You can create new one, you can duplicate or you import export one, but we're gonna create one. And then we're gonna go through the settings. And this is the first tab, what we're gonna have here, the general. You can change the OBS language to pretty much every major language there is. And for that reason, it's also a very powerful program because of that. And here you can do a few settings, um, such as do you want to see the cursor over the projector? So when you're streaming, will the cursor appear or not? I have it on because, well, I don't really have any reason not to hide it. So that's, we don't really need to talk about anything else about the general tab. So we go to the encoding where most of the magic happens. So the first thing we need to choose is the encoder. We have X264, Quick Sync is not available for me, and then we have NVIDIA and NVENC. And NVIDIA is depending on which graphic card you have. I have a quite powerful one, and um, so for that reason I can use that if I want to, but I don't really need to. It's, it's recommended for some people um, that have very powerful computers or want to like Put the load in the graphic card instead of the processor and stuff like that. You need to enable CBR, CBR padding, so three boxes have to be checked here. And then we have the bit rates and buffer size. These amounts should be both the same, okay? This will affect the quality of the stream. And your internet comes into play in the disk factor. And you can do uh, through the speedtest.net through a test, and there's also I'm going to link um, a bit of a um, statistical thing which you can do on an OBS website which will check you the statistics which you should have for these. But um, let's say I have a 10 megabyte upload speed, which it doesn't really mean 10 megabits because it's kind of inconsistent like most of the internets in the world are. So 3.5K is pretty good. Uh, most of the people are using probably somewhere from 2K to 3K probably. And it depends on, of course, which type of game you're playing. If it's very heavy on your computer, well, then you kind of need higher bit rates. And then we have audio encoding. And actually, AAC is not very good because it's more heavy on your computer. So if you want to optimize and have less strain on your computer, you should definitely go for MP3. And we're going to apply that because MP3 is much better in terms of saving the power on your computer. And it just takes more less resources for MP3. That's one of the key things that you should definitely do. And next up we have the broadcast settings, okay? And this is where most of the magic happens. So this first thing is of course the mode. File put op output only means game recording. And I have uh, another video about how to game record on OBS and you should definitely check out that also on my channel. But we're gonna use the live streaming here, of course. And we have streaming services and here you can have multiple ones. And you can have a custom one here too which is pretty much where you can put sites like Beampro and etc. But we're going to choose Twitch. And then we need to choose the actual server. And uh, For me, Stockholm is the best because I live in Scandinavia and it's no closest to me. There's a program called the Server Ping, which I will be showing in the later parts of the video, which will show you the pings for each of the servers. And then there is the play path, aka the stream key. And you can get this from Twitch's website. You can Google stream Twitch stream key and you will get it. Uh, it's kind of, I'm gonna put a link down below where you can find it. Auto reconnect means if the stream or your internet breaks down, will the stream try to reconnect 
to the uh, to the stream. Um, actually, I want the stream to go back much fast as possible, so I'm gonna change it to five seconds. Okay. And delay means if you want to stream a delayed stream, Twitch already has a 15 second stream. Some streaming websites like Hitbox or Beam Pro actually have second stream, one second delay um, with Twitch and the chat and the stream itself. So you can put additional delay to this if you want, if you're streaming a tournament or something like that. Um, it's just up to you. Uh, minimize network impact. Well, if you want to do it, you can make that happen. If you want to save your stream files, and this makes your stream also game record while you're streaming, and this will put a strain into your computer. So be very, like, you have to really think, do you want to have this open while you're streaming? And and then there's the option if you keep recording if live stream stops. Replay buffer length should be one second, and here you can choose the file path where actually it is um, going the actual file, but as I said, most of the time the Twitch saves the uh, like the VODs themselves, so you don't really need to do this. And I really recommend not doing it because I talked to you just a minute ago. It just puts strain into your computer. Next up, we have the video tab, and the video adapter should be GeForce or whatever um, you have as a graphic card. Base resolution should be your um, monitors resolution. You can also choose if you want to capture monitor one or two or three, depending how many you have. Um, usually I recommend having two monitors for streaming. It makes things much easier and convenient. And then we have resolution downscale and this will just downscale the, the image. This will, <coughs> sorry about that. This will improve the they will drop the stream quality, not significantly, but because people are not watching really full screen and stuff like that. So usually I use 1.50 or 1.75 um, or 1.25, but don't use the, the standard because this will just put a lot of strain on your computer. If you don't have a super computer, it should definitely be 1.25 to 1.75, definitely. It, it won't have like a major significant impact, but it will inf have an impact on the video quality. Um, I mean, it will have an impact on your streaming without you having frame drops or anything. FPS. Um, definitely, if you have the option to disable the arrow, do it because it makes... I actually have it disabled already, but disabling arrow will do a major impact also on the computer's like running speed while you're streaming. FPS, 60 is quite high, 45 is pretty good. I use somewhere between 35 to 45, depending on the game. You know, you have to remember like old 8-bit games, if you're streaming arcade games, these games run like 15 FPS, so it doesn't really matter which FPS is here. Anything above 60 is pretty crazy and you should pr probably don't do it because it's gonna put strain onto your computer. And people are, the, the human eye probably most of the time won't be seeing the difference between 60 and 45 FPS. So don't put like too much strain onto your computer. If you want to have a lot of cool other stuff on running like overlays and stuff, and the, these things have to be taken accord if you want to have a run a quality stream. So you definitely should have somewhere on 40 FPS. 30 FPS definitely fine too. Audio. Uh, this is where you set your microphone. I have an ATR USB microphone. Then we have speakers where, well, it doesn't really matter which you have. Um, you can force the microphone to be mono sound instead of stereo. Push to talk delay should be 200 seconds. These leave them as they are, one, one, zero. These should be as they are. Hot keys, so these are hot keys how to stop the stream, start recording, start replay buffer, unmute mic, mute mic, push to talk, push to talk to, and you can check if you want to use push to talk. Um, they are really good, convenient ways to, you can click from the actual menu to, from here to toggle them off, but hotkeys are better. And definitely set things that are really convenient for you. They can be button into your mouse or whatever. Advanced, here we have more settings that we need to do. Um, use multi-threaded optimizations. Process prior class should be normal. Skin buffering time should be 700. 
and disable encoding while previewing this this could be you could check it definitely allow other modifiers on hotkeys check that cpu preset should be very fast to ultra fast but super fast is pretty good like a good mediocre the i don't suggest using the lower settings it's not good and the encoding profile should be main keyframe interval should be two use cvr uh, to be checked custom x260 encoder setting cfr 20 and this will also have an impact on the actual quality of the stream you can put it to 25 or 10 or the higher i think now i have don't sorry this is really bad i'm gonna put it on the description but the higher the number is the better the quality i'm pretty sure that's how it is and you have to write it this down so cfr equals 20. And we don't really need to talk, discuss these things. They're not very uh, requirable. They are just stuff. Quick sync encoder. We don't need to really talk about this too much because this is not an option a lot of people use. Um, the browser, this is just a plugin. We don't need to talk about that. Then we have the microphone noise gate. Okay, it's getting a bit laggy if you're using these third party apps. So they may load a bit in the OBS program. So you should have, these are the thresholds. So when you have your mic open, not pause to talk, this means when what kind of voice volume will trigger the microphone get open because you don't want those, you know, clicking sounds and keyboard, these type of sounds on the microphone too much. So usually, usually on the minus 40 dB is pretty good. Skin switcher, this is just a ping. This is just a, you know, we don't need to talk about that because that's a plugin. And here's the server ping that I was talking about. This will tell you the best pings for each server for Twitch and all the other things. So for Twitch, we have, of course, EU. And for me, it's Stockholm has a 17 ping. That's the average and that's the last ping. And it's the best. And that's why we have set that ping. And this is a plugin that you can download i can put it on the description but usually just choose the server that's closest to you there might be some differences sometimes and sometimes it might be better to take the bit further one but just take the one that's in your region and finally we have the actual the stream itself okay and we have scenes which are pretty much well they are like well, they're different slides or different like when TV channels have like things when they go to this like please stand by or maintenance stream. You you have these scenes here, okay? So we're gonna create one for testing. We're gonna add scene and we're gonna kill it the normal streaming scene for Twitch. And the sources we have to go to the sources panel here and add a source, okay? And I have a window capture, monitor capture. Window capture is for browsers. Certain games have to be captured through window depending which indie they are or etc. Text is pretty much flying text, video capture device and game capture. And game capture is probably what you're looking for today. So we're gonna, gonna put a game capture here. We're gonna push okay. And there's applications here, okay? And we have, um, I have a game here, which I'm going to show you is the Age of Empires 2. I'm going to put the start streaming. We're going to hit that button here. It's a blank screen right now, but now we're going to move the screen. As you can see, the Age of Empires is here. We're going to put it on the background because it's not really what we're going to discuss here. But the game capture, we can go into the properties. We are able to choose to stretch image to screen and what we'll do well actually this will not work with this game no actually it does so it actually will change the how this is the preview screen of the stream itself it shows you how big of a screen it captures here and through edit scene so if you choose the game capture you can edit scene and you can like resize it here okay to if you want to have an overlay here like I have like this type of an overlay, but we sometimes, you know, now it bugs. It's just a game that bugs actually right now here because 
it's just the type, type of an old game that may not always capture. Running the game, running the OBS on admin mode will make it easier to capture the actual game. So that is really important. So run uh, OBS always on admin mode because some games may require you to, you know, uh, run it on admin mode. And we can like put text here, like Twitch stream. And here you can enter a text which can appears on the screen. And there it is, you know, you can see we're streaming right now. And here you can see my microphone volume here going up and down. I have muted the game, so there's no game sounds, but it normally would, you know, appear. And you can adjust the volumes of the microphones here and the sounds from here, of course. And as when the screen appears on the previous screen here, you know you're live, okay? And I think that's pretty much in a nutshell. And as I already told you, there's also you can upload images, um, there's add different things here, video, this, some of these plugins that are not with the normal program. But also, like, let's see, we have the Twitch stream text here. Also, the order of the sources will appear, which is on top. So if we order the game stream to be on top, move top, you can see the, the actual text will be on the, the, on the layer under. If you have used Photoshop, this is really easy to understand. So this will dictate which of the stuff is top of them. So like things, things like overlay should be on the top on the sources and stuff like that. And I think this is pretty much a long video, but I pretty much went through how the stream to Twitch is not really uh, nuclear science. You can tweak the numbers on advanced encoding and stuff like that to get different types of qualities. And that will change, of course, you know, how the stream, you, you should have always a person to check out the stream quality and all types of stuff to um, have the best streaming quality, which doesn't make your computer die and will stream on a decent quality and not a potato quality. Thanks for watching this stream, I mean this video. Please check out my other OBS videos, my Sony Vegas, Photoshop guys also on the channel. Make sure to subscribe, give it a like, thumbs up. If you have questions how to set it up, I will be helping you in the comments below. And I will see you guys later. Cheers.